Module 4, Lesson 11. With this lesson, we're working with word problems. Where it is, we will use the RDW approach. Where it is, we will read, draw, and write for each of those problems. As we're writing, let's make sure to express our answer clearly and precisely. Make sure we're answering that question that's asked. Here is a problem. Take a moment to read it carefully to yourself. And I'll read it out loud. Kylie and Lisa share a 12 ounce bag of chips. Kylie eats one quarter of the bag and Liza eats one third of the bag. And the question that's being asked is what fraction of the bag is left? So we'll underline that question and let's write a focused answer. Blank of the bag is left. Where it is that we're saying that there is a fraction of the bag left. Let's draw to be able to better represent this problem. We see here it says 12 ounce bag of chips and then we also see one quarter of the bag that Kylie eats and Liza eating one third of the bag. The whole within this problem then is what? Right, the whole bag. And we know that the whole bag is what? 12 ounces. One of the things that this doesn't tell us though, and we know that one bag is 12 ounces, all it's saying is it's not asking us how many ounces are left, how many ounces of chips are left, but it's actually asking us the fraction of the bag that's left. We still figure it out in the same manner, in the same approach, where we're saying, hey, one quarter of the bag is what Kylie eats. So we can go ahead and label that section. This is for K for Kylie. And we know that this amount that she eats equals one fourth of the bag. We also know that Liza eats one third of the bag. This looks about a third. We'll label it with an L. And this is one third of the bag. Now the whole bag would be one because we're talking about one whole or one whole bag. Sure, I know it equals 12 ounces. However, one is what we need to know for that fraction there so that we're able to figure out that fraction of the bag, the amount that is left. So what we will do is we can go ahead and take the whole bag and subtract the one fourth and subtract the one third to be able to figure out that fraction of the bag that is left. So I've now written out an expression to be able to solve and if I solve it, 1 minus 1 fourth, that leaves me with 3 fourths, and then I'm subtracting 1 third. I need to get a common denominator. I can get that of 12. 3 fourths does equal 9 twelfths. 1 third equals 4 twelfths. And then so 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths is 5 twelfths. I'll go ahead and write that fraction in and say 5 twelfths of the bag is left. Let's also write it within here in my bar model and think whether or not it makes sense. One fourth, one third, five twelfths. Adding those together, do I get one whole? And the answer to that would end up being yes, we would get that. Four twelfths, three twelfths, which is seven twelfths, plus another five twelfths does give me a whole. So, five twelfths of the bag is left after Kylie and Liza share chips. Here we have another problem. It says that Marsha has 15 pints of paint. She uses two-fifths of the paint to paint her room. She uses one-third to paint the kitchen. To paint the living room, she needs 10 pints of paint. How many pints will she need to buy? Reread that to yourself. Let's 
write that out. A focused answer. She will need to buy blank pints of paint to paint her living room. So we know she needs 10. And then yet she also used two-fifths of the paint to paint her room and one-third of that paint to paint the kitchen. So the whole amount, if we just start with this first part here, the whole amount is 15. And we're taking that fractional part of that number. So the whole amount was 15. Let's figure out how much paint she used already so that we can figure out how much she has left. It says two-fifths of the paint to paint her room. So if I take 15 there and divide it into five parts and look at two of those parts, this is the amount of paint that she used then to paint her room. So for the room, I have two-fifths of 15. If we have 15 divided by 5, and then we're looking at 2 of those parts. So 2 of those parts is 6. So she uses 6 pints to paint her room. If I use an equation to figure out the paint for the kitchen, the kitchen is also 1 third at this point, and that whole amount was 15. So it's 1 third of 15, which I can also write as 1 third times 15, which is equal to 1 times 15, which is 15 over 3. I should be thinking of 15 divided by 3, which is 5. So for the room, she used 6. For the kitchen, she used 5. And she had 15. She had 15. So the amount used then, if I had that whole fraction bar of 15 still, this is the room at 6, this is the kitchen at 5. The whole amount was 15. So what's the expression to figure out this amount that was left? It would be 15 minus 6 plus 5. 6 plus 5 is 11, and 15 minus 11 is 4. So she had 4 left. I'm not done though. I'm not going to write she will need to buy four pints of paint. So since she has four left and she needs ten, she needs ten, she has four, has four, needs ten. How much does she need to buy? What do we do with the ten and the four? Right. We need to subtract them. We'll take the larger one and subtract the smaller one. 10 to minus 4 is 6. She will need to buy 6 pints of paint. Thinking if our answer is reasonable, let's see. If she buys 6, right? She bought 6. She had 4 left. Yeah, I think that this is reasonable. Let's look at one final problem. Mrs. Rich buys five boxes of cookies for her class. Each box contains 24 cookies. One-tenth of her 30 students are absent. If the cookies are shared equally, how many cookies will each student get? You must be present to get a cookie. So let's write this out and think about this. We'll write out that focused answer. Each student will get blank cookies. Let's start by thinking how many students that this is going to be split amongst. We have one-tenth of 30 students are absent. So this bar represents the students. And these are all of her students. All the students was what? Right. 30. So the students was 30. So we have 30 students. And yet, unfortunately, one-tenth of those were absent. So we'll divide it into 10 parts. And 
we're saying, hey, unfortunately, one-tenth were absent. So we're looking at one-tenth of 30. We're looking at one-tenth of 30. Or one-tenth times 30, which is equal to 30 over 10, which does equal 3. The other way to look at this would have been that 10 of these units equal 30. So one unit, when I divide by 10 on both sides, would be 30 divided by 10. That's the expression that we are looking at to be able to solve for the amount that were absent. If 3 are absent, that means this here would represent the people who are actually there, and that would be 30 minus 3, which is 27, and 27 are present. So, those 27 people get to share all of the cookies. Now, if we look at that other piece of information within the problem, we see cookies. Mrs. Rich is buying 5 boxes of cookies, yet each box contains 24 cookies. So, we're looking at all these cookies here. And how many boxes? Five. Right. And in this case, each box already contains 24 cookies. So there's 24 within each of those boxes. And then what do I have to do with those 24s? Put them all together. So we have, let's see, the expression could be 5 times 24. It also could have been 24 plus 24 plus 24 plus 24. I'll use the commutative property to reorder those factors. 5 times 4 is 20, 0. Regroup a 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2, 120. So now there's 120 cookies, and remember I'm splitting them between 27 people, because you have to be present to get a cookie. So we're saying, in this case, for those 120 cookies, I'm dividing them by 27. I'm dividing them by 27. Let's cancel, thinking 3, so this is ninths now and this is 40 ninths, and that'll be a little easier for me to go ahead and solve. Counting by nines is 9, 18, 27, 36. That would be 4 then, and with the remainder of 4. So, each student will get 4 and 4 ninths cookies. Which does seem reasonable. If each student had gotten 5 cookies, there's 27 students. That would be 27 times 5, which is fairly close to the 5 times 24. They get a little fewer. Our answer is reasonable. And we expressed our answer clearly.